this off the shape? Yes, please. Now? Yes. Uh, Edward M. Pence, address 8209 Shady Brook Drive, born June 10th, 1924. Place of interview, Westchester Community Center. Uh, 7979 Cox Road, Westchester, Ohio, 4069. Date of interview, June 27th, 2011. Branch of Service, Army. Service number 3568486. Okay, Ed, thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonder now if uh, you'd be kind to tell us, you like to sit, sit up straight there. Oh, okay. Be kind enough to tell us about your education. Uh, where, where were you born? I was born in Clark County, Kentucky. What is, what is that near? There's a reference. It's near, it's, it's, it's near, uh, it's near Olive Hill and uh, Grayson. Grayson, okay. About 25 miles uh, close to, it's, it's not real close, but 25 miles to Grayson, about 10 or 12 miles to Olive Hill. Okay, so well, thank you very much. What about your education? <clears throat> uh, I was in the three C's back when... No, we, you're edu in school, well, I, elementary school. I didn't get, but I didn't get hardly any at all. I, I, was, I went in the three C's when I was about, I remember about 14 or 15. And then after what in the three C's, uh, uh, I lost out on my education. Okay. And then after I was in there for two or three years, the war broke out, the, the, the Second World War. Okay. And they, uh, they drafted me in the Army. Okay, before we go there, let's, let's uh, touch base at home again. What about some of your brothers and sisters? <clears throat> what was their name? Yes, the names of some of your... Russell. And Willie, and uh, uh, Russell Willie, and Opal, and and uh, see Otis, and Otis, and James, and uh, my sister's whose name was Josephine, the youngest yeah. one, and I had an older sister named Sarah, Sarah Ann. Yeah. Do you have any brothers in the service? Yeah, there's four of us at the same time. And what were their names? And what service were they in? Uh, Ott was, Ottis was in the Army, and uh, Otis was in the infantry. He was in the Army too, infantry. And my, my youngest brother was in the Navy. And what was his name? His name's James <coughs> Elwood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Now, uh, in your army, what was in your military service in the United States Army? What was your highest rank? I was a uh, uh, first uh, when I first went in. Is just a private, private first class. Then what was your rank when you were discharged? Uh, private first class. PF, PFC, okay. PFC. <clears throat> okay, uh, you were talking earlier about the three C's. Uh, that is really, really interesting, and I'd like to delve into that and find out just how you found out about it and who all in your community was involved in that. Was anybody else in your family involved in the three C's? Well, we found out a couple. Roosevelt started it back when he was in, that was right after that depression. Hoover started, Hoover was one of run that had the depression. And right after that, Roosevelt got in and when he got in, he started the three C's and WPA and, and this health care and all that stuff. He started all that stuff. Right. What, what about members of your fa your family? Were any other members uh, involved in the three C's? Let's see. Y'all had one brother that was in the three C's. Otis. Otis Pence. How did you find out about it? Did you have to go to the post office and sign up for it or just what? I don't know. Uh, let's see. How did I find out about it? It was uh, we, uh, 
I don't know any way I know about it. If I found out that there was the three seats, so I wasn't there was no work or nothing back in there where I was living, <clears> and I just went, I went to three seats just to get to have something to do. Right. But uh, well, yeah. well, you mentioned that you worked at the uh, on the Hoover Dam. Just what did you do out there? I, I done that out in, when I was in. I, I was in the three seas in Kentucky, but first, and then after I stayed there about a year or so, they come around and said, "Anybody want to go out to um, uh, to uh, uh, see it was uh, uh, can't think of it now." Out to, in Colorado? No, it was it was. Uh, Back this way, but I can't think of what the heck the name of it now. It's, uh, well, before we go there, what about what projects did you work on in Kentucky? We built fences and just built fences and and worked on mostly fences and just worked on farmers' land and stuff. Help carry rocks and different things like that. Oh, you actually worked on private property? Yeah, private is, property. Is that right? I yeah. thought maybe you might have worked at some of the state parks or something. No, it was just private <clears throat> private places in Kentucky. And then, then we went to, out to uh, where is he? Uh, uh, Montana. It was Montana's where I went to. Santa Maria, Montana. Mm -hmm. I went there and... Uh, well, how did you get out there? They took us by, by, by truck. Did they provide clothing for you? Uh, clothing? Yes. Shirts and pants and gloves and hats and what have you? I ain't sure, but I think they did. I ain't sure about that, about they, what they first them or not. I think they did. We didn't... I went, when I went in, I just stayed there until I got out. It was uh, <clears throat> until I had to, was drafted into the Army out there. How many people would they put together in a work group? I mean, did you have work with 10 or 12 guys or 100? Well, there was probably 8 or 10 of them in a, in a, in a bunch that was working on uh, fences and stuff like that. We built a fence and, and doing some work on the farms. What kind of fences were you building? The wire fences? Wire or? fences, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I drove, mm -hmm. that's where I learned to drive a truck back and forth from the camp out there. I'd, they let me drive and haul the, the, uh, our buddies out the back. And I learned to drive a truck. And then when I went in the Army, they asked me, was anybody here who drove a truck outside? And I said, yeah, I did. And they said, well, we want you as an ambulance driver. That was, well, well, that was let, right at the end of the mm -hmm. war. Well, let me ask you this. With driving a truck, did you have to have a license? They didn't have to have it when I first started driving, but. But I got out, they give me a chauffeur's license. But I mean, while, while you were in 3C, there was no such thing as a driver's license. No, they didn't give me no mm -hmm. They just uh, told me that I was, uh, they, they, but they made me a set of chauffeur's license, give them to me before I got out. And I used them to get driver's license after I got out. Well, that's why after you were discharged. After I was <clears throat> discharged, yeah. How, how did you get work, word at the 3C camp that you were being in, uh, drafted? I wasn't drafted in the three C's. No, you were working in the three C's when you got word that you were... Oh, I don't know what the date was now, but anyway... No, how, how did you find out about it? Did you receive a letter or what that you were uh, being drafted? Well, I heard, found out about it, uh, about the war breaking out. No. How did you find out that your turn was, your time was up and you had to go... Register for the draft. How did you get that word? They told me, they, they, they told us you had seven days to get back home when they mentioned it after Roosevelt made a speech over the radio, which listened to the radio, and we had seven days to get back to Vanceburg, Kentucky. That was county seat where I lived in Kentucky. And they had to, you had to reclassify, get reclassified then, there, and then they sent you up to, I think, Huntington, West Virginia, to, uh, Take examination, and then from there we come across the river here, Cincinnati, to Fort over here. What is it called? Now? Fort Thomas. Fort Thomas. And I was sent from there to Fort Sheridan, Illinois. That's well, where they sent me out of. Well, well, when you got that word that you were being drafted, did did that break up? Pretty much break up the the three C camp. Where it did break it up. Yeah, it broke it up, and 
They took every one of the three C's into the Army. So, so everybody they, had a... There were seven of us in the outfit I was in that couldn't read and write. And I couldn't read and write my name or nothing. And they, there were seven of us in there. And they took a, a lieutenant out of training and put with us to learn us how to read and write. Well, you learned to read and write in the three C's? No. Oh, that was later on. I learned to read okay. and write in the okay. Army. Okay. But in the three C camp, when you got the word over the radio that everybody had seven days to report home? Yeah, you had seven days to get back home. So that, that pretty well broke up the three C camp. That, that broke them up. We, we, we didn't have to go back or nothing. It was over with, and we had to get classified for the Army. Then how did you get home? Did they provide transportation for you to get home? Do you recall? No, yeah. I don't think so. I think I had to ride a bus. I think I rode a bus back. What, what was the pay at the 3C camp? How much a month did you get paid? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember now what much, but maybe a little something. I don't remember, but Army was $25 a month. Yeah, but that was, okay. But, uh, I was just wondering how, how, how you were able to afford to get back home to get to the draft board. I, I, I don't remember exactly how I, uh, well, how much they give me for for that. I can't remember now if there's anything at all. Well, they lovely first her meals and everything back then. That was, yeah, that was, they provided them. Given any money out. Okay. All right, let's go on to your induction and you got home, however you got home, by bus or hitchhiked or whatever. I had to, I had to get home by bus. I think about the only way I had to get home with the bus then. Then you had, uh, then you had a report to Huntington, West Virginia, is that correct? I had to report to Vanceburg, Kentucky, to the county seat. Okay. That was where I lived, in the county seat of it. And then from there, they sent me to Huntington, West Virginia, to take examination to go into the Army. That's where I took examination at. <clears throat> How many of them from fellows from your community went in at the same time? Very many? There was some went in, but I don't remember how many. There you don't remember any of their names? Just a little. Ladders, I think it was one was there. Ladders, Jack Ladder, he lived there, and he had a boy that went in. He got killed, and he was in the Air Force, and he got killed in there. But uh, some of the others, I don't remember the rest of the names. But there was some more that was in there. Okay, from Huntington, West Virginia, to Fort Thomas, how did you? They took us by bus. I think it was down there. By bus. bus down there. Okay, and a truck. Is there anything special memories about that? Any? No, I think we stopped one time in in uh, in, uh, in uh, Ohio. We stopped at uh, something where, where there was uh, having a for about two or three days. Of, uh, I can't remember what the heck the name of it was now. But we stopped there for over just was riding going by a truck, and we stopped over there for two or three days just to rest up, and, uh, and about all that was for, I think. And then we went on the rest of the way and, and to Montana. That's where we went to. Montana. Now you were on your way to uh, Fort Fort Thomas. Oh, uh, yeah, they were, they were talking about the army. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, was talking, okay. I think you were talking about that. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, was, then from Fort Thomas. From Fort uh, Thomas, I went for Fort Sheridan, Illinois. That's where you took basic training, Fort Sheridan? Yeah, but that was in the anti-aircraft. It wasn't field artillery. Now, what about basic training? Basic training was it, it, uh, uh, learning to fire them uh, uh, 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns out over the Gulf, well, over that. Uh, over the Pacific? No, it wasn't the Pacific. It was in Chicago, right out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I don't understand that. That was, please. That was uh, that was your basic training for the army. Yes. Oh, I took it in Fort Sheridan, Illinois. The okay. basic training. Okay. I took it right there. Yeah. Do you do you remember how long that was? Yeah, it was about, like, uh, like eight weeks or so. Yeah, the basic training was. Uh, we, we trained there for about, I'd say about two years, I believe it was two years. Then we went from there to Fort Bliss, Texas. And I, 
and I, I, we was getting ready to go to Pacific when we went. We was, after we got to Fort Bliss, we trained for a while there, and they sent us from there to Santa Maria, California. From uh, well, let's see. Uh, well, you were basic training. Did you have any problems with sick call or anything like that? No. I've Made always, it all, all the way through? Able, able, able to do it. When did you uh, pull KP? Was that in basic training or was that later on? Love KP? KP. i done it to, uh, in the Army, the KP. Most yeah, right. I've never done much of that in the Army. I, I the three C's. I might have done some. No, I know. But was that in basic training or was that later on out west? Your KP? So it was just basic training part of it. They, they picked so many each week or so to do the work in the kitchen, to set tables and take plates up and everything after everybody eat. Peel potatoes and stuff like that. You recall ever how many potatoes you peeled at one time? Oh, <laughs> there's bushels of them out on there. There's a whole bunch of it. <laughs> How many guys would they have together to peel the potatoes? Oh, there wasn't many. There was about, well, maybe uh, five or six or so. That's about all there was for that. Mm -hmm. They had to do more sedices, and besides the, that, we had to do that work. And the same thing happened after we got in the Army. You had to go work KP and all that stuff. Sure, too. sure. Anything memorable happened there at basic training? Anything unusual? Yeah, that, that's a, that's, I was in an aircraft then, wasn't it? Well, that was in your advanced training. No? Yeah, that was, a, that was a, when I went to, from, uh, from uh, Fort Sheridan, Illinois, is where I went to, to take the basic training, but also went to, down to, after that we went to Fort Bliss, Texas. Okay. That and was for your... trained for Waller. That was for your advanced training in uh, um, any aircraft? It was an aircraft there too. Then they sent us from there. Well, to, well to excuse come. me, Ed. Well, while we're there at Fort Bliss, what type of weapons were you firing? I was firing a 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Anything happened there that was needs to be mentioned? Nothing real bad. I know. I know we wasn't allowed to go over by ourselves over in Mexico. Mexico was pretty close to our Fort Bliss. They tell us not to go over there because you get beat up and get the head beat off. And, <laughs> and I, I went over there a couple of times. So you went over? <laughs> I went over there a couple of times. I seen some of them getting their heads all beat off, and I, I didn't go back no more. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to go back over with them to help fight them over there. They was getting mad about that. I wouldn't go. I, <laughs> I stayed out of it. <laughs> Okay, you mentioned the seven-day furlough. When, when did you get that? Was that uh, advanced training or basic training? This was still in the <clears throat> Army, wasn't it? Yeah, right. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was basic. What did you say now? <clears throat> you said you had a seven-day furlough? Yeah, they, give us, they just give us that for a weekend. I don't know what it was, maybe two or four of us. Was, uh, could, there's two of them are going back to where I... Uh, signed up at in Vanceburg, Kentucky, and I went back home. And a couple more was it went into three uh, into the army. They went back home too, just for. Do you remember for, the name of the fellows that went back home with you? No, I can't remember them now. It's been so long ago. How did you get there? Did you hitchhike or take a bus or what? No, one of them had an old car, and we we drove back in that old car back home. How old? How old was that car? I don't know, it was a Model T, I think it was. Oh, was it real? An old car. Yeah, it sure was. Wow. We rode that thing back there. So you went back to Carter County? Yeah, I went back to Carter and then, uh, no, I, no, no, from, didn't go back to Carter. After, uh, after I got into the Army, my dad had moved to Quincy, Kentucky and moved to another county. What county is that in? Do you remember? It was, uh, uh, let's see, Lewis County. Lewis County. Thank you. County. He moved down there in uh, Quincy, Kentucky, and uh, from there is where I went to, through the basic training and stuff in the, uh, down in the Fort Bliss and Fort Sheridan. I went to the trainings there, right. and right. there when I first went in. Yeah. 
And then, then after I stayed in Fort Bliss for uh, probably about a year or six months, I forget now, but it, was, it seemed like it was about a year. And then we went from there to Santa Maria, California to take some training. And then we were supposed to go from there overseas over to Pacific to fight. And we got up there and we had to take a test on the airplanes and pulling the target behind it. Excuse me, where was this? In Saint, uh, Santa Monica? No, it wasn't Santa Maria, it was Santa Maria. Or Santa Maria, excuse me. And uh, we were supposed to went to Pacific there, and they, before we went, they wanted us to take a, a test over the ocean out there, and it's a plane pulling the target, and we and we were supposed to shoot that target, at the target, shoot it off. And uh, there was more guns than one and one eyes on, and there was about four or five more guns shooting at that target on was pulling that plane. And uh, one of the planes shot a hole, a couple holes through the, <laughs> shot the target off, went right on up there and shot a couple holes through the, through, through the, through the plane. And, the, and they had the pilot come down to all of us around and the, and the, the, <laughs> the uh, guy was over the whole, you know, the whole battalion that was going over. He said, you ain't fit to go overseas and they busted out, fit up. And he sent everybody to all different outfits in the whole United States. And I went back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and then the field artillery. Now, how many people are you talking about? <clears throat> how many people were in this group that they broke up? Oh, they was, I expect uh, there was a battalion, uh, a big... So you're talking about maybe a thousand guys? There was a battalion going overseas to fight Pacific. You're talking about a thousand men? Yeah, there were a bit of that many, maybe more. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Wow. When we shot the hole through the, somebody, I don't remember if it was Mike's gun or which one it was that shot. Well, you know it wasn't your gun, didn't right? No. <clears throat> it wasn't your gun. No, I don't think it was. If, if it was, I didn't know it. But it didn't make any difference. Yeah, that's right. There was two trackers on each gun, trackers. And and they was tracking it along there onto that target. And all I was was a far, loader and far. No matter where they tracked it to, I, I was supposed to fire it. And I fired the gun right at that target all the time. And, and one of the guns went in and shot that, shot a hole through that plane. Now, how many men were on a team for a gun, and what? How did they function? What did they do? Two, four, five at least. I was. Let's see. The other was, there was one on each side of that an anti-aircraft gun. There was two on on one gun and a, and a, a loader and far. I was a loader and far. That fired the gun. There's three of us. Okay. And, but he was more than that on it on the gun. I don't remember exactly how many all together was on it, but he was. There was three of us that was doing the firing of the gun. I, I fired the shells out. The pig had them mid clips, and you put them right down through the top and. When they said far, you fired them right out. Is there about four rounds in a clip, or how many? There's five, I believe. Five. five. And this five is five. forty millimeter. Yeah, it was a forty millimeter and aircraft gun. Okay, fine. And we, we, we stayed there. And after we went from there, we went to to uh, Santa Maria, California. Then there's where I had to take some. Uh, they, 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 they wanted us to take a uh, learn to read and write. I couldn't even read by my name when I went in there out of the three C's. And then they tucked me into the army when I couldn't read and write my name. And uh, they give us, seven of us all together, was, they uh, give us uh, between the second and third grade education. And after I got that education and went overseas, I couldn't read and write enough to send a letter home to my mother and father. I was there a whole year in the, in the overseas to fight. And I never wrote one letter to my father and mother. They didn't even know whether I was dead or alive. And my other brothers, they did have a little bit of education. They got a little bit more than I did. But uh, I didn't know how to read and write at all. Wow. They got me in there <clears throat> overseas. But uh, I was, that's what happened. And the, so they educated you, they gave you a third grade education in California before you shipped overseas. Yeah, I shipped overseas there. <clears throat> Between the second and it was between the second and I think it's between the second and fourth grade, somewhere around in there. Second or third, one or the other. That was at the 
they give us, the uh, lieutenant gave us, and they was wanting to score seas right then, but we, after we shot the hole through the plane, they, they busted <laughs> it up and sent me back to Fort Bliss, or uh, Fort... Fort uh, Bragg? Uh, uh, and uh, what did I say? That Fort was? Bragg? Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They sent me back there, and we had to do all that training over again on the big guns before we went to Germany. When I, th I think we trained on them before we went over there about, oh, about six months, something like that. A little more. We, we had some idea of what <clears throat> thing, only it was big guns, big 240s, they would fire 25 miles. Wow. That was the maximum range on them from 12 to 25 miles. And uh, uh, we, sh we went over with that big field artillery gun and we, they pulled with, say, with number six and number 10 tanks. Now with that uh, two, uh, 240 millimeter round, were you still the fire on on the weapon, or that was uh, that was that big field artillery gun, the, the two, two forty, two forty. Now what the what forty form? millimeter was anti aircraft? Right. Gun. What job did you have on those guns on the two forty? I was a loader and fire on it too. On that they, also, they gave me the same job when okay. I got on that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, we didn't use them that much. We used them. If we got in Germany about, oh, probably a third of the way, about a third of the way through, and then they, we had to go off on foot the rest of the way through Germany until it was over. Okay. They, they, before, they, before we go any further with that, what about, uh, you're at Fort Bragg, now you're getting ready to uh, be shipped overseas, okay? Fort, Fort Bragg, before we were shipped overseas. Well, wasn't much else for after Fort Bragg. They trained, they trained us to fire them guns and right. everything, but that's about it. Right. So, so you've been trained, now you get shipped overseas? Yeah, we got shipped overseas. Went to, to up to, I went to, uh, uh, up through New York, past the Statue of Liberty, right on over. Do you remember the name of the ship? Yeah, it was the name Santa Maria. Santa Maria. Santa Maria. And that ship was, was going over on, was, was our guns and everything went to La Havre, France, to the La Havre, France, our big guns and stuff, and we were supposed to went there too, but they happened to be with the ship I was on, got hit by a, I don't think it was, it might have been a torpedo, but something hit it and we had to go on into Southampton, Eng, in Southampton, England, to get off of that. We got off of that ship, stayed one night, overnight there, then they, Give us they, the British give us another ship and we got on it and went from there across the English Channel to La Havre, France, and then now we caught up with our guns and stuff again. Excuse me, do you, do you remember the name of the ship that you were transferred to? That was the British ship. It was a it was a British ship, yeah, but I don't remember what the name of it was. I know it, it wasn't near as good a ship as the one we was on before it got hit. Now, when you uh, when the Santa Maria was hit. Was it near shore? Was it near? It was about oh maybe thirty miles from England. Yeah, I went to Southampton, England, and got off of it and got on the old British ship across the English Channel. And then and they, it was real quick. We had to do it. We, we we they took us in there one night into Southampton, England. Next morning they shipped us out on that old ship to. But this was just one ship. Right. Well, before we go go any farther, was the Santa Maria when it was hit? And you were 30 miles from shore. How did they get a ship to you so quickly? They got a couple of them little, uh, them little tugboats or whatever they call them that, to hook onto it and pull it into the, it wouldn't run, it couldn't run no more. It, it hit the front end and knocked the front end out and uh, it was sinking. They passed it up best they could to get it to Southampton, England. And we got off of it and got on that old British ship and went across the, to La Havre, France to where our guns and everything was waiting on us. Then from there we went across, across the, bat, the Battle of the Bulge. It's where we went into oh, yeah, Germany. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, okay. So, was there any, any lives lost when this ship was uh, damaged? I don't think so. It just hit the front end of it. But it didn't, I don't think anybody, I have never heard nothing about anybody else getting killed. They could have been, but I don't yeah. remember many. But, but we set out there for I think it was about, oh, maybe half a day or so. The rest of the ships all went left, left 
left us and went right on to La Havre, France. That's where they're supposed to go. But when we got hit, we just sat there and was this target to get hit again. We thought it was a torpedo, but it, it might have been a, another ship hit us or something. But we didn't know what hit us. I think it's torpedo maybe hit us. Pretty lucky. Anyway, anyway, we got hit. Okay. All right, then uh, when you went into France and you were uh, part of the, as part of the 15th Army and you were headed for Battle of the Bulge? Yeah, we went to Battle of the Bulge and, and, the, and the Rhine River was right there at the Battle of the Bulge and, when, and, the, and, the, and the Germans had blown the bridge down that went across the Rhine River to Germany and, and we couldn't get across when we got there and they had, we had to wait, I think, one day until they put some uh, pontoon bridges, boats on beside of each other, yeah. and then we got across there. We went around across our big guns, and we used them for to soften up them Germans with them for a while. But then they, uh, we, we was uh, we was too close to far with other soldiers. Is afraid they would be far on top of them or kill them a bunch of them. So they they discontinued them and we had to go off on foot as guards and stuff to the rest of the way. And then I ended up driving an ambulance right at the end of the war when the, when the war was ending and Jeff, the Germans gave up. I was right there and they, I had to, I had to drive an ambulance that time. Now Ed, with all the exposure that you've had with these high powered guns, have you had any uh, hearing loss or anything like that? Well, I, yeah, I had some, and it, it bothered me some, but it never was bad, too bad, but it bothered me some. And they, they give me, a, I get a little pension from it now. You I do? get about $125 a month well, good. pension from good. it. Good, good, They uh, My daughter got that. I wouldn't have got that if she hadn't turned it in. She she was looking at my discharge, and she thought, said, you ought to get a little bit of, maybe a, 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 some help on that a little bit. And she, she wrote up something and sent it in, and they give me $115 a month. Now, how long have you been receiving that? Yeah, I've been about two or three years. Oh, my goodness. About two or three years. And they asked me a letter. They wrote a letter to me and said, how come you waited so long? I got a letter back and said, how come you waited so long to say anything about it? Well, I didn't think nothing about it. I just thought that I didn't know what They never offered me nothing. And when I got discharged at Cape Atterbury, Indiana, well, they, they didn't offer to compensate you for years past, though, did they? No, not uh, didn't. They, 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 they sure could have done that. Never got a thing. Now, I, I noticed that you mentioned there's something about you uncovered some German weapons. Can you describe what that was all about? Yeah, I, uh, I was on guard duty one night, guarding the, the Russian, big Russian concentration camp that, that we had uh, tuck over. And we thought there was German soldiers in there, but there wasn't as Russian soldiers. The Germans had captured them and had them in there. And we overrun that and we had to keep them, had to guard them for a while till the Russians come and got them. And while we was in there, they, was, uh, they had a bunch of guns piled up outside of the, that Russian concentration camp. They had a bunch of guns piled up there, but I didn't know it, but the, the, one of them German civilians noted. And while I was on guard duty, he happened to pick me to try to tell some of the Americans where they's at so we could pick them up to stop them, them Russians from killing them German civilians. And, and, and when they, and I was there on guard duty that night and all of a sudden here come a German civilian out there. He didn't have no gun and he, he got on his knees and begging and said, please, please come into here. He was pointing out in the woods, out in the edge of the woods there like that. And I put my gun, I was supposed to just went ahead and shot him, not even do nothing. But uh, he, he was a bagging so bad, I just couldn't shoot him. I, I didn't kill him, I, I let him go. And I, I followed him out to the, where he was talking about, out in the edge of the woods, it was just about 100 yards out there. And he had a big bunch of guns, there's 400 of them piled up and brush top piled on top of them. And the captain told me the next morning that the Russians was using them to go down there and rape and kill them Germans at the night. In the night time. And he said, you've done, you've captured, done a big thing. And that's all he said. And he said, I've done a big thing. But he never told me I was getting no bronze star or anything like that for it. It was just, he said, you've done a big thing. That's all. And he said, I'll give you, 
a couple of your buddies to help you make a box if you want to send, uh, you can have three of them guns. Uh, he told me I could pick any three I wanted. I picked out three of them and I picked one rifle and two pistols, the real best pistols the Germans had, them Lugers. Lugers. Yeah, and I, and I picked them and I sent, the, they helped me put a box together, a little long box for that rifle and I set it home. I kept it for, oh, I kept it for probably 50 years and I finally just gave it to my, well, my son. Wow. He was wanting to say, that make a good deer gun. Oh, yeah. He, I let him have it. Wow. And the pistols, I got talked out of them before I ever got overseas from over there back here. I, they, some of my buddies kept saying, oh, you, you, they know that I, I that captured them guns, all them guns, and they said, we ain't got nothing to take home. They wanted something to take home. They kept begging me for them pistols. And, and I finally ended up letting them have them for $25 a piece. Well, do you remember the guys' names? No, I can't remember them now. It's been too long. But I let, I let them get away from me. And I found out after I got home, it's worth about $1,000 a piece. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe that's, more. Yeah. But I didn't know it then. I didn't, I didn't pay. I just didn't know it. And I didn't really need them. But no. And I let them get away from it, the pistols, but I've still got the rifle, German rifle. Your son has that? Yeah, I got that rifle yet. Do you have a picture of it? Huh? Do you have a picture of the rifle? Was that a 9 millimeter rifle or yeah, uh, uh, third, 9 millimeter? 30 caliber or what? Do you know? 5.9 or something. It was, yeah. it was, okay. it was, it was yeah. a German rifle. Right. And uh, my son's got it now. And. Uh, I never did use it or anything. It just left sitting around. And, uh, well, he he liked to hunt and stuff. Let him have it. He got it. Do they have a bayonet with it or? No, I think I didn't have no bayonet with it. I don't think I had a bayonet with it. I just had the rifle, and they got a box of shells with it. Too. Well, you did you really? Yeah, I got some shells with it. Them Russians had them hid outside of the. So they was uh, they was in that camp before we got there. And the Germans had captured them and put them in there, and we overrun the uh, overrun the whole thing and took the German the Russians back. And when we captured, we thought we was captured and had a bunch of German prisoners in there, but it wasn't. It's was just Russians. Well, they were allies. Yeah, and boy, they was meaner than the Dickens. They was going out there killing them civilians and raping them, doing everything. Man, it's and, terrible and then, things. Then uh, after I captured them and got them guns, and the captain said, you can have any three of them you want. I got three of them and took them. Brought them back, brought the rifle back, but it, I mean the yeah. pistols back, but I didn't get pistols back either. I let two of them talk me out of them. <laughs> but I did get the, I sent the rifle home in the box. And it was home when I got there. So is that rifle here in the Cincinnati area, or where is it? It's in uh, Springfield now. Springfield. The boy lives in Springfield. That's where I used to live up there. Yeah, I right. lived up for over 40 years. Okay, you have another incident about a soldier in a tank. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, when, when we were going from uh, La Havre, France, across uh, France, we, they'd already took France. And while I was going across there, uh, they was uh, we had to land a 50 caliber machine gun up on that up on the tank, and 50 cal machine gun mounted right. up there. And ever, there's seven of us down in the tank, and uh, one of us had to go up every three to four hours and man that gun as we go going along. And uh, when it was my turn to go up, when I went up, was, uh, my buddy was laying up there with his tongue leaking out of his head, and, his, and he was just about dead, just, just about gone. And I called back down to the, the Sergeant told him, and he said, well, I'll stop the convoy. We was in a big convoy then, going to the, to the Battle of the Bulge and through France. And he stopped the convoy, and they got him, we got him off of there and dragged him down on the ground, and he come to, got come to, it helped him, it, it saved him. He got some air, some, he was, he gassed on them uh, oh, tanks of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide poison. Almost killed him. And, and wow. I, I turned it in and got him. And uh, they put him on the, then the captain put him up in front in his Jeep. So he was leading the convoy and took him. I never seen him again as after that. Never seen him more. Wow. But I saved his life. He sure did. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 
So your citations, uh, is there anything else that you would like to uh, share about, well, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, you were awarded the Bronze Star. Now, uh, the other fellows were involved with that. Did they uh, receive the Bronze Star or was it just solely you for recovering those weapons? It was just, a, I've done that on guard duty. Right, but I mean, was just and you alone or was... Did there was other guards that was on around that big German concentration camp, but it just, civilian, so some reason or other, it just picked on picked me him. to uh, to uh, try to let some of the Americans know about it so they'd get them guns. Right. And when I, when I, after I seen them and captured them, I called a captain down and they come and got them a big truck and took them up. And he gave me, said, you can pick any three of them you want. And I got three of them and, and that was the end of it. And, now you mentioned something about conscientious objectors. What experience did you have with there those? There were some of them in my outfit, <clears throat> some conscientious objectives that wouldn't carry a gun. They was they was there, but they wouldn't carry a gun. They wouldn't fight, but they would uh, carry a gun and go right where it was been was to fight and stuff. But they just wouldn't fight. They was just kind of they, they was just conscientious objective, and they I didn't know that's what there was first. I, I was going along and carrying my gun and everything, and they didn't have no gun, and I wondered, what the heck, why would they have a gun? I didn't know any better at that time, and, and I found out later that they was conscientious objective and didn't believe in carrying a gun at all. Well, what would they do? They just went along with us, but they didn't far, they wouldn't fire no gun or shoot no guns. Would they load ammo in, into a weapon, or? Well, they'd help out whatever we want to do, but they wouldn't fire no guns. They'd do they things. wouldn't shoot. They wouldn't shoot, no. Wouldn't shoot nothing. And uh, I didn't know that's what there was for a long time. I'd been walking alongside them and everything. I wondered why I would have to carry a gun. They wasn't carrying any. They, wouldn't, they just wouldn't carry them at all. They were with us all the time. If someone was injured, would they uh, ap uh, apply first aid if somebody was hurt? Well, when I when I was with them, they, we wasn't in no real combat fighting. Was just uh, uh, we, they they never had to use their guns at all. But okay. it was in training and stuff like that all the time. Okay. It was they would I'd, I'd see them, but they wasn't really in the, the combat combat fighting. Okay, so you never saw them on the front line or anything no, like that. No, I never seen them, but. They was in my outfit, and what, where they went and gun, I don't know. I don't know where, what happened to them, but they were some of them in my outfit. Okay, just have a couple, couple questions here. Uh, what about clothing in the field when you were in the front? Did you have any problems getting any clothing, or? No, I never had no problems. I, I, I was, I went into Germany right after across the Rhine River and went all the way across Germany to the end until they give up and. I never, I, I just got whatever I needed. I never had no problem getting that. What about ammo or food, or do you have any shortage of any of those items? No, I had them cave them rations, them rations they give you, and a canteen with water in it. That's all I had. I didn't have no nothing else. What about a hot meal? We never got no hot meals till we was uh, uh, the. Wars was kind of winding down, and we we they did give us a little bit of hot meals in some. You mean like for over a year you didn't have a hot meal? Yeah, we'd have a hot meal ever so often, but not there very much. We just got some, just very little. What about your first holiday in combat? When was when would that have been? Would that have been like a Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. I never paid any attention to it. I I couldn't write a letter home to my bed, but. I wasn't able to write nothing. No, I just, I didn't, I just didn't, 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 didn't turn me on. Nothing, nothing about that. So you didn't send any letters, and you didn't receive any letters. No, none no, at all. No, no packages. No, nothing. I didn't send nothing. I didn't see, receive nothing. The only time they seen me is when uh, I come back. Uh, they did give me my uniform on. They told me I could take my uniform with me and on with me from Camp Atterbury, Indiana, home. I wore it home and took it off and laid it up, and finally my mother and father both died, and I lost that. They, it 
went somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it ever happened to it, but I left it there. And when I went, to, I went to Springfield after I got down there for a while because there wasn't no work or nothing there. There wasn't no work or nothing before I left, and it was worse, just as bad as when I went back. Mm-hmm. So I went to go. I come to Springfield to get work. And well, I got married to the woman next door, uh, where I lived next door, and I took her with me to Springfield. Well, this was a gal from home? Huh? You married a girl from home? Yeah, she lived next door to my dad, right next door. And then she was out there one time <laughs> along the fence in between uh, where she lived and where my dad lived, picking flowers. And I asked, went over and talked to her, and, and uh, uh, we got together, and we... We, and she went with me. We, we, we went on to, went to Springfield and got a job. Good. Did you see any notable generals while you were in the field, in the service? Yeah, I'd seen some, but I never talked to them. You don't know who they were? I know they was generals and stuff, but I didn't talk to them. I just know they was there, but I didn't talk to them. What about USO shows? Did you have any opportunity to see a USO show? A what? USO. USO. Right. Yeah, they had some of that overseas. After I got over there, you could go uh, get a few things that you needed overseas. They had it set up over, right in, uh, after you got into Germany, they set up a few places that you could go to that and, and uh, buy a few things, whatever you wanted, if you had any money. No, I, I don't mean a PX. I mean a USO show like Bob Hope. And those no, guys? I never seen none of them. Never, never seen, seen any of them. We was too busy. We didn't have time to see them anyway. What about experiences with the Red Cross? Do you have any good experiences with the Red Cross? No, I never did. I never, I never, I never got anything from them. They did. They was. I know desire or in there some, but I never had no, never got nothing from them or anything. Did you ever see any ministers in the field, like any preachers or? Reverends or anything? No, I never seen any. Not as I know. No. Never received the Bible or anything while you were. No, never seen nothing like that. We was always busy, good, and going was on the move. And right. It was on the move right through Germany, and there wasn't no stopping. Do you remember where you were on May seventh, nineteen forty-five, when the war ended in Europe? Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was right at the end of the war. Right at the end of the war when it ended, and I can't remember what town it was over in Germany, but it was, uh, it was, uh, I was in Germany all the way across when it was over. I, we, we was right in there where, where it was over at. We had to be to get a, to get a victory medal. Yeah. You had yeah. to be in the area where it was right. at, or you wouldn't yeah. get no victory medal. Yeah, that's, wonder, that's why I was wondering, do you remember where you were? Yeah, I was right in the end of the war. What well, about August 10th, 1945, when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima? That's when they, they had us ready from there to go to Japan. When, the war, when we got done, Germany was to give up first. Right. And then uh, we got ready to go to Japan, and they had us ready, a boat ready. They had some of the stuff up in it to, to go to Japan. And, and when he dropped that bomb, I changed it. I got to come home. Changed. I didn't have to go to Japan. I didn't want to go in the house. Oh, <laughs> that ride over would have killed me. Let me ask you this: Did, did you see any signs Kilroy was here? Uh, what? Kilroy was here. Kilroy. Right. No, never. Never did see any of those signs. Never did. They were all over the Pacific, and I thought they were in Europe also. I don't remember ever seeing any. Okay. And over there. What was your last GI meal at Camp Atterbury? Camp Atterbury in the man. Well, I had it in the building, one of the buildings there. I eat there at that building, and then I got my discharge, and that was it. And then I took off on foot. Right, but, but what? do you remember what your last meal was? No, I can't remember that, what it was. But I wasn't there talk- very long. And- I've talked to a number of guys. <clears throat> And it seemed like their last meal was always SOS. <clears throat> yeah, I, I never, I never paid that much attention to it. And whatever it was, I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I eat it. I always <laughs> eat lunch for the time they had anything. And uh, I, 
after I got discharged, I still had my uniform and, uh, and I didn't have no American money to get home on. And, uh, and they never offered me any and I had to hitchhike to get back to where I lived 150 miles away. You had a hitchhike from the East Coast? Where did you come in? Uh, I was Camp Atta, I was at Oh, you were at Camp Atterbury. Camp Atterbury, that's, right. that's where I was discharged at. That's right. And then I had to go from there to Quincy, Kentucky, which was about 150 miles away. With no money? With no money. I had the German money, but that wasn't, they couldn't spend it. And uh, I never asked them, I could have asked them, maybe they'd give me something to rode a bus, but I just never was used to bagging anything from somebody. And I just didn't ask them. I just took off on foot and did side. Well, when did you get your last pay? Last pay? They either give it to me when I got my discharge or I got it later at home. Mm -hmm. you know, where my dad lived, one or the other, I don't remember now. I think I got it maybe when I got discharged, my last pay. Well, wasn't that at Camp Atterbury? Yeah, when? Camp Atterbury is where I was discharged. You were discharged there? Yeah. Well, I tell you, but, but well, what about your reception at home? Were they? Did they know you were coming? Well, they couldn't know no, you were coming. No, they didn't know. Didn't know until I walked in the door, in the door, in the house. Well, how was that? Was that was up, getting up at age two. Then they didn't. But they're both living. Yeah, they're still living. Back in the, back in forty five, I think it was when I got discharged. So how was that reception? Were they? Well, they was glad to see me, <laughs> but uh, they, my dad couldn't read and write either. He couldn't read and write his name at all. And another thing about it, uh, is he had he he raised tobacco and he he uh, made a little money, extra money, and he put it in the Vanceburg Bank down there, and 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 he and he uh, wanted to get some of it out, and he went down there, and uh, he got out what he wanted to give to the kids that he wanted to give it to. He gave them some, and uh, uh, <clears throat> after he got it, he told me, he said, you, you, you can uh, get the rest of it. If something happens to me, you can give it and give the rest of it to your brothers and sisters. Well, when, uh, after he died, he got hit by a car and killed. And after he died, I went and asked him for the money in the bank, and they said, he ain't got no money in here. He ain't got a bit. And he, I know what he did have because I was with him when he got it out of there to, to give some of it to my brothers and sisters. And he told me that little house he lived in, that he's given that to me, he give me the house. And I got that, but I didn't get no money at all. But he gave me the little house and he got some money and give it to my brothers and sisters. And then when I went to get what was in there out to give them, they said, he ain't got nothing in here. And they had no receipts or no, he couldn't read and write, and he had no papers drawn up or nothing, and they know that too. And he didn't couldn't get a thing. They kept every bit of it. So, do you think maybe they just took advantage of him? Huh? Do you think they took advantage of sure, him? Well, they, they had to. <clears throat> yeah, they took it. But he was already dead. And but when he was living, he could get any part he had in there, get the money mm -hmm. any time he wanted to. But after he died, it was a different story. They kept every bit of it. Wow. That was, that was way back in the. I think it was in the, let's see, it was, mid, in the, it was in the mid 40s, 40s, 40s 45, yeah. 46. Yeah, <clears throat> they kept every darn bit of he had in there, and he didn't have much in there. He had probably two or three thousand dollars, or maybe a little more than that. I don't know what it was, but anyway, he had some in there, and and I went to and asked him for it, and they said he ain't got nothing in here, and I talked to a lawyer, and he said, well, if you ain't got no receipts or nothing, said, what can you do? You can't do nothing. Yeah, that was a lot of money back then. Yeah. That was a lot of money. They did. Now, were you able to do anything with the GI Bill? Did you go to any schooling or anything under the GI Bill? No, I had to work. I had to, when I got out of the Army, I didn't have nothing, and I had to just, I got a job at International Harvester, and I had to work, and, and I had finally ended up with four kids, and and my wife and all, and I just had to work all the time. I didn't have time to go to no school. And I just I just used common horse sets <laughs> all this time. Get it through. That's the only thing I had to fall back on. You did a great job. 
Well, so you went to uh, Springfield then, the International Harvester, and you retired from there with how many years service? 30, I think it was 31, 31, 31 years I worked in there. I got a, I got a, I think I got one little card here where I worked at the International, still in my pocket, and I, and I showed that to you yet. It's got my, it's a, it's been a long time since I, Let's see, I think uh, we're going to stop this now. Okay, Ed, this will be uh, concluding our interview. Is there anything you would like to add or comment about your experience? I don't know what I could say. Well, it's really just uh, this experience that I went through and I just... Uh, 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 I just used to, uh, uh, I just had to use common horse sense. Well, well, let me just say uh, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, make this recording and appreciate your service to the country and thank you for your time.